still on the air. We're just ready for the next. Anyone wishing to uh, testify on the next item, the uh, Talka Junior Soccer Complex, please stand and raise your hand. Do you solemnly swear and affirm under the penalties of perjury the testimony you're about to give will be the whole truth, nothing but the truth? Please respond, I do. Thank you very much. Good afternoon again. Uh, the next case um, before you is a site plan, a request for site plan approval for the Toka Junior Soccer Complex. The applicant is Toka Juniors LLC, requesting site plan approval for the development of four outdoor sports fields, four pavilions, a bathroom facility, a storage building, and associated parking on a 50-acre site. So as um, I will review the um, items on the site plan um, with the graphic and then um, show the Planning Commission some photographs and then go dive into the re staff report elements. The proposed use is being reviewed as an outdoor sports recreation facility um, under the heading of commercial amusements in our zoning ordinance and the use is a permitted use in the agricultural zoning district with site plan approval. Um, just as a, a friendly reminder or refresher, I will read just two short paragraphs from our zoning code about um, the approval criteria for site plans. Uh, this is very short. Site development plan approval shall be granted when the planning commission or its authorized representatives find that the application for development has met the following criteria based upon the standards and provisions of this chapter. First one is site development. Existing and anticipated surrounding land uses have been adequately considered in the design of the development and negative impacts have been minimized through such means as building placement or scale, landscaping or screening, and an evaluation of lighting. Anticipated surrounding uses shall be determined based on existing zoning and land use designations. The further paragraphs talk about transportation and parking, public utilities, natural features, and common areas. So I just wanted to give that as a friendly refresher for the planning commission. Okay, so let's move to the site plan graphic. Okay, so the plan proposes four, as I mentioned, four soccer fields on uh, varying sizes, and those sizes are listed in your staff report, and the application says that they will be natural or artificial turf. Um, there are four pavilions proposed on the site as well. There's one, two, three, and four. There's a bathroom facility here kind of in the central part of the site. And there's paved walk paved walkways around the, um, all the parking lots and the roadways. It's a little hard to see on here, but it's on, on your site plan and in the uh, staff report. And there are plans for the future conversion of the existing dwelling on the property into a clubhouse. Uh, the applicant indicates 10 to 15 special tournament events each year. And the application does include requests for two modifications one being a parking space modification and a modification to the light pole heights. Okay, so the site is on Big Woods Road, uh, shown here. The site's right in the center here. To the south is uh, Maryland Route 355. Up here is Maryland Route 80. The uh, red outline is the eastern edge of the Urbana Community Growth Area. Uh, this is, uh, these stream systems here on the property uh, flow into Farney, uh, Bennett Creek, actually. So the streams there are tributary to Bennett Creek. That's a, I'll have other, other images of that that are a little more clear. Uh, this is the comprehensive plan. Uh, the comprehensive plan for the site and the surrounding area is agriculture and rural. And the, the red dots is, again, the um, extent of the Urbana community growth area. Uh, the zoning of the site and the surrounding parcels is agricultural. And this is just another um, better focused image of the site. So here is Big Woods Road here on the 
right hand side of the property you see the existing farmstead and house here uh, there are two stream systems shown here but there is another sensitive headwater first order stream stream flowing through this this site so that just gives you a lay of the landscape um, Uh, this, uh, western view of the site, Big Woods Roads is in your uh, the, the foreground. You can see the farmhouse on the property and just other elements of the landscape here. And just a final view. Th this is just a, a photograph of the headwater stream area on the property, and that entire area is proposed to be protected and preserved under a forest conservation easement. I'll point that out again. It's worth noting on the other plan that I failed to mention. So the, um, the dark green are the uh, proposed forest conservation easements, and this is the headwater area that's being protected through a forest conservation easement. Very sound uh, design there. Okay, so the setbacks uh, lot dimensions are listed on page 7 of the staff report. Uh, staff does note that the entire field area, including the grass or turf area beyond the regulated playing space, must meet the setbacks for the use in the zoning district. It must be fully depicted on the site plan and the future improvement plan. The landscaping plan shows the street trees along Big Woods Road, buffering in the parking lots, and landscaping along the entrance lane. The staff recommends additional perimeter landscape buffering be shown along the northern property line here. Um, cursors not cooperating here. Here. Uh, the site plan shows a row of crepe myrtles, but um, we're recommending that additional denser evergreens be planted there. And then additional parking lot screening is also needed along the western side of the parking lot for field number four. So down. Show that. That area is here along, along this area, parking next to field four. The site is proposed to have one access point on Big Woods Road, which will it'll utilize and enlarge the existing entrance for the single-family dwelling on the property. The interior access roads will be 20 to 24 feet in width with the paved surface. A stop sign is required for vehicles exiting the site onto Big Woods Road and where the interior roadway to field number four's parking area meets the main access lane. So just a... Uh, Point that out here where the cursor is, stop sign is needed for these people to stop here before entering the main um, entry lane. The application proposes 50 parking spaces for each field. They've indicated on the site plan that that is sufficient for the, the needs of the soccer complex. Uh, parking spaces will be gravel and measure 8 by 18 feet. ADA spaces and the main travel lane will be paved. Uh, staff is requiring an area for vehicles to turn around at the end of each parking lot, uh, as well as an extension of the paved walkway to the pavilion adjacent to field number one down here. Just a slight gap in the uh, depiction of the, the walkway to that pavilion. Bicycle racks are required per our code because the site's proximity to the community growth area. <clears throat> Excuse me, a note must be added to the plan indicating conformance with the county's bicycle design guide. A Frederick County Health Department well permit for field, irriga a, excuse me, field irrigation and potable use must be obtained as well. The existing well and septic for the house requires repair. Uh, those approval conditions we're suggesting for the Planning Commission are listed in the staff report. The plan proposes to remove less than one acre of 
the 15 acres of forest on the site. 14.8 acres of existing forest will be placed in a protective easement, including the area around the vast majority of the first order headwater stream that I mentioned. Uh, none of the 16 specimen trees are slated for removal for this project. A traffic, imp a traffic impact analysis was conducted as part of the site plan submission and the LOU describes the escrow payments required by, of the applicant. Um, an internal roadway is planned to cross a gas line easement that exists on the property. Um, it's in this area. You see the, the easement there. And the applicant has communicated with Washington Gas who indicated no issues with the proposal, um, but they are requiring an encroachment agreement um, be completed and signed and executed uh, before construction begins. We've also added that as a, a new condition today to uh, your consideration. The site plan proposes pole lights measuring 70 feet in height for field number three. The applicant requests a modification to the 18-foot height limit for lights for commercial uses. A photometric plan shows no light spillage at the property line that exceeds 0.5 foot candles. The applicant has provided a justification statement for the lighting modification, including a cross-section of the light poles, a roadway with the street tree vegetation, to depict one perspective of the light poles in the landscape. The plan also indicates a 10 p.m. cutoff for the lights proposed on field number three. Uh, staff is recommending additional, that additional information and analysis is warranted for the Planning Commission to grant the light pole height modification. Uh, the section from our zoning ordinance uh, Addressing lighting modifications reads as such, the Planning Commission may modify the lighting standards within this section based on characteristics of the proposed use, photometric studies, nationally recognized standards, or other documentation as approved by the Planning Commission. Um, the you know, issues that staff is recommending that the Planning Commission um, have greater evaluation of and examination of include, you know, the light trespass issues, the sky glow and glare. How is that minimized or eliminated? Um, how, is, how do we ensure that the field will not be overlit, that overlighting does not occur? And just a description of the realistic lighting needs for the site and the use. Um, as you heard previously, there are um, there is guidance and recommendation for sports field lighting from many sources. Um, some of those sources uh, utilize what's known as the class of play, which addresses the, uh, the field sizes, the, 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 whether the um, fields are used for professional sports leagues, uh, high school or recreational leagues, the number of spectators, all to determine the lighting needs for soccer fields. There's also recommendations out there in the literature for on horizontal illuminance or actually how bright does the field actually have to be to have play. Um, there are also limits in the literature about limits on foot candles, the intensity of the light meeting uh, reaching the site, and then issues of uh, light pole setbacks from the playing fields indicating or influencing the number of poles and the location Chairman and the heights. For the record, Noel Manalo, Law Offices of Miles and Stockbridge, here on behalf of the applicant, Toka Juniors. Also with us is Andrew Brown, J.F. Brown and Associates, land planner um, with uh, the project, and uh, Joe Calagero traffic, uh, with Traffic Group, Traffic Consultant, and, Mr. and I'd like to introduce you to Mr. Christian Nogura with uh, Toka Juniors. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Pleasure to be here with you on this somewhat of a, I, I guess it's fortuitous in, in the sense that there are two soccer site plans before. I, it's totally coincidental, but 
I think that it sort of underscores kind of what I wanted to contextualize the site plan on, and that's obviously looking at permitted uses and what you all are planning for for Frederick County. And I'm going to offer this as, as persuasive evidence, not necessarily binding evidence because it's not passed yet. It's still a draft, but we have, you know, obviously we've been going through this draft, Livable Frederick, and one of the unique things about it is we have uh, one of our visions is, of course, uh, the health vision. And so, you know, under that we have this goal of active lifestyles, and clearly you have initiatives of group fitness, active children, uh, and then supporting initiatives, which would include um, ensure adequate recreational space to support sports leagues that provide opportunities for adults of all ages to play at beginner, intermediate, and competitive levels in a variety of sports to encourage participation regardless of skill. So before you even pass Livable Frederick, you got one site plan that's already uh, before us on the agenda uh, that, that's already um, acting on this initiative, and hopefully you'll see fit to do the same with ours. And so again, we're very excited to have this uh, opportunity. We've obviously been looking at this property uh, for quite a while. Uh, Toka Juniors is very excited uh, about this. I'm just going to give some int introductory remarks. Um, I'll have Mr. Nogura introduce himself and Toka to you all. Uh, I'll have uh, Mr. Brown uh, go a little bit into the lighting since I know that's one of the things that we would like to discuss and then I'll, I'll have some concluding remarks on our affirmative case. So again, just stating for the record, obviously we've submitted a site plan for permitted use. Uh, as, uh, as, a, as the staff report demonstrates, we, we obviously concur with uh, Mr. Goodfellow that uh, the conclusions on page 14 that we meet the requirements. We're fine with all of the 11 conditions as outlined in the, in the staff report. Uh, we've, we've worked very hard with Mr. Goodfellow and, and county staff to bring forward a plan that um, we feel works best with this site. Um, again, it's uh, permitted use. We, we did, um, I don't know that they've, they've come, but the, your case record should reflect that there, are, there has been uh, support um, offered for the site by neighbors, Mr. Uh, Dan and Ms. Jody Grove of 3240 Big Woods Road. They did email uh, staff in support, and I believe Mr. Mossberg, also a neighbor, did call in in support. That's part of, I believe, the case record. So we do have some interface with, with neighbors that are, are supportive. Clearly, we're here to, answer, uh, to uh, listen to any other neighbor concerns and address those as well. I wanted to note that we do have a net gain in forestation of uh, approximately an acre. So again, as Mr. Goodfellow noted, we're trying to be very sensitive into how, how we're designing the site. Uh, you can see it's a, it's a marked contrast to um, the, uh, the site plan that came um, before you in the agenda item previous because again, um, and I'll have Mr. Nagura explain the program for Toka Juniors, but you know, we're very sort of focused on, on uh, youth soccer uh, and it's very community oriented. We feel like this site will, will, will really serve our, our, our interests and you know, as far as the thinking through, okay, what programming would be um, optimal uh, and mindful of the requirements both of the zoning ordinance uh, and the neighbors, we thought that you know, lighting one field and having a limitation on that would, would suffice. Again, I'm going to have Mr. Brown sort of walk through a little bit uh, in more detail the lighting that's, that's specified. Uh, we did, he did offer uh, into the record, and it's been referenced a couple times, the, ju the modification justification. I think if you put it in the context of its location relative to Urbana High School and then compared to uh, the lighting, um, the, the lighting program that's, that's uh, engaged in other county facilities, including Ballinger, you'll see that you know, this is sort of on the, you know, it's, not, it's not as intensive. And again, given that we don't have the, the same sort of, um, I guess, uh, surrounding neighborhood concern that was expressed in the previous uh, site plan, I think that would, that would sort of tend to show that we're, we're trying to be mindful of the surroundings. So I'd hope you'd, you'd, you'd sort of take that into consideration as you're, as you're looking at this. I mean, obviously, we're, we're all about the kids being out there playing soccer. Uh, when it's, you know, getting a little bit toward the, the, the nighttime hours instead of, um, you know, inside looking at their devices. So that's kind of where we're, we're coming from, at least with the one field. Um, so with that, um, I'm going to turn it over to um, Mr. Nogura to, uh, you know, just give a couple minutes on, on TOCA, and then Andrew will give you some of the specifics on the lighting, just to clarify, because there was a, a typo in, in the um, modification request. All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for all your effort. You guys have a very long day, and I think you guys were really very, very professional with all the questions and bringing everybody to the point. Uh, our uh, uh, club is a very, very small club. Uh, we are based in uh, Potomac, Maryland, and we are a community club. Our uh, players are all from the community. 
we looked, we've been looking for a place where we can build another uh, community, and we thought that Urbana was a great location. That's why um, if you look at the site that we chose, is really uh, next to the community. We think uh, this will be for the kids of the Urbana to pretty much walk to the uh, soccer uh, place or uh, have a very short uh, dr uh, driving from their homes in Urbana. Our club it goes from ages uh, four, five years old, all the way up to adults. We have moms that play soccer. They, they used to k take the kids to uh, soccer practice. We have dads. We have coaches. Uh, we are a non-for-profit. Or our, uh, I myself, I'm a physician. Uh, they're all volunteer-based. We don't have the resources, uh, money that uh, other clubs have. Uh, so it's built by the community. We're really looking forward to the Urbana community to uh, think about this uh, club for their community. So uh, saying that, we, we are trying to uh, bring the club hours for the kids in the Urbana, and we will use the facility from our uh, members in Potomac during the weekends. There is no planning for us. We cannot drive from Potomac to uh, Urbana for practice. Uh, we discourage uh, driving. So we have many players that come from different parts, uh, from Gatorsburg, Rockville, that's very close. And we tell them you should find a club within your community. So our goal is to bring a community-based club the way that I was raised in Argentina with community and neighborhood club. We fully uh, uh, agree with the kids playing. Uh, that's why by biking and it's very encouraging and uh, to the site. And uh, we fully agree that they should be out there as long as they can. That's why we think we should have at least one field lighted for a few hours uh, after dark. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Negro. Uh, good, af good afternoon, commissioners. Uh, again, thank you, everyone, for being here. Thank you to staff uh, for their thorough review. Um, we'll touch on the lighting. That seems to be the hot topic uh, today. Um, <laughs> there is a typo, and I apologize in advance on the, on the, on the graphic. Uh, the profile of the site should be field uh, three, which is the central field that we are proposing the four light poles for. Um, while I don't have a scale uh, with me on my trained eye and using the last knuckle of my finger, uh, that light pole is approximately about 250 to 260 feet from, from the edge of pavement. Um, sheet two is one inch equals 100 feet. so. Um, that that is an accurate dimension. Uh, when we uh, went to the light engineer to figure out what can we put up as a, at a minimum to light this field, uh, because light poles are very expensive, as the previous group attested to, uh, they came back and told me 70 feet. I almost fell out of my chair. But after talking to him and learning about the light process and how they work, we're way better off, again, with just four 70-foot light poles shining directly down on the field to reduce the outside light pollution. Uh, being, now, having said that, and to answer the gentleman's question before, field three is approximately 30 feet lower in elevation than what Big Woods Road is. So there is some sort of nexus there. So while they are 70 feet, they're 70 feet down the hill, I don't think that they're going to look gigantous out uh, on Big Woods Road, but uh, you know the, the goal of the light is to go down. Now, each light pole has about six heads on it. If you compare that to uh, the, the George Foreman field at Ballinger Creek, I think there are about 10 to 12 heads on each of those light poles. Those light poles are only 200 and some feet to the nearest house. So that's a county park. Uh, they operate those lights uh, as needed. We feel that our lights are, are much less in scope from, from, a, from a, 
a total light perspective, a, amount of light illumination, and we wanted to go with the minimum uh, for our field that we felt was safe for players to use on the field. So while we respect staff's request for additional information, we went to a certified stamp or professional light engineer and asked, what can we put here that is the minimum that will light the field that will be the best uh, economics for the club? And that's where we came with the four, four light poles with the uh, uh, six heads on each light pole. Thanks, Mr. Brown. So hopefully that will give you some more context for the modification request. Again, it's not uh, as if we're asking for something that we, don't, we, we feel is, is out of scope or out of, out of scale. Uh, again, given similar uses and the, the concentration of light and obviously the requirements of the zoning ordinance and site plan relative to what we have to provide to give you enough information to, to look at the, uh, the modification. Uh, again, we, we're showing um, zero light spillage uh, per the photometric plan, that's part of the record. Uh, so with that, we would offer the, the, the site plan before you, again, through our hard work and working with staff, that we meet the requirements of zoning ordinance and the adequate public facilities ordinance as uh, memorialized in the APFO, which includes the road proffers uh, relative to the traffic findings. Um, and with that, I'll rest the affirmative case, and we're happy to obviously answer any questions uh, you or the public. There ain't no more discussion. I'd like to entertain a motion. Including condition number 12, I move the Planning Commission approve site development plan SP-17-09, AP 18035, APFO 18036, and FRO 18037 with conditions as listed in the staff report, including approval of requested modifications for the proposed Toco Junior Soccer Complex. Based on the findings and conclusions of the staff report and testimony, exhibits, and documentary evidence produced at the public meeting. I second. Motion by Mr. Tressler, seconded by Ms. Serez. Any further discussion on the motion? All those in favor, please signify by raising your hand. 7 0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. The next item on the agenda is Village 10, Villages of Urbana. Yes. 